Now, are they breathing? No, ma'am. My wife and my son. And what is your name? My name is Alec Murdoch. Please hurry. Get the one of them moving. Hello everyone, you're listening to The Crime Room, a true crime podcast about how homicide detectives catch bad guys. I'm Jolyn Grace. And I'm Brandon. Thanks for joining us. On this episode, we're traveling all the way to South Carolina, where once upon a time, a really bad guy lived. In South Carolina, you get the best of both worlds. Plenty of warm weather all year round. You get to fish, hunt, golf, Kind of idyllic, don't you think? The land is plentiful, beautiful rolling hills, dense forest, clear blue skies. At least this much is true for Hampton, a prosperous community some hundred miles from Columbia, the state historical capital. In Hampton, people wave at each other as they pass by. The doors stay unlocked. Everyone is a friend. Hampton is safe. Or is it? Look beyond the neat streets lining Hampton. Don't be fooled by the friendly smiles. Around here, people are still reeling from the unraveling of one family. Two murders led to more. Accusations of backroom deals, extortion, money laundering, even murder for hire. And if that doesn't make the hair on your arm stand up, then wait till you hear the rest. A monster hid in plain sight. He struck at random. His crimes were fleeing ripples of whispers no one dared to speak of in public. Because in every small town, there is one family that runs the show. And in Hampton, that was the Murdoch dynasty. Alec Murdoch is suspected of killing his wife and son. But that's not all. The once prominent lawyer is also suspected in killing his housekeeper. He faces life in prison if found guilty in one of those murders, let alone all. The scion of the Murdoch family is currently in jail on over 70 charges, the lion's share of which for fraud. Alec Murdoch turned out to be the monster no one asked for or imagined. For years, he flew under the radar, protected by the clot of his family's name and power. When you look up the word privileged, at some point you saw Alec Murdoch's picture there. Let's talk crime. Let's talk crime. So let's go over the Murdoch dynasty. They were a prominent American legal family in the low county region of South Carolina. They actually held the 14th Circuit District solicitor position between the years of 1920 and 2006, which was 87 years almost a century. And that position holds great power because every criminal case must in in those counties must go through them. So any criminal case that comes to the door within those counties, they get to see. The solicitor? The solicitor solicitor does, yes. And of course, if they're involved, they're going to know everybody in the system. They're going Mm -hmm. to be friends. When you say dynasty and you're like, was it really a dynasty? And then you start learning about them and you're like, oh, 87 years holding the same position. And no one was like, hold up. Really? Should we allow you to? Randolph Murdoch, senior. He founded a one-man law firm, which then turned into a law firm, Peters, Murdoch, Parker, Eltsroth, and Derek. So what they did is they focused on personal injury, right? So back then, they were able to be very successful in what they did because of what's called form shopping, which is if you're suing a company for something that happened in one county, you can actually sue them in a different county in which you know the judge is more lenient towards the plaintiff. That sounds fair. Yeah, no, definitely not fair. And actually, because of this abuse of subpoena in power, the American Tort Reform Association declared the 14th Circuit District to be the third worst judicial hellhold for defendants. Meaning that if you're a defendant, you might as well just start 
packing your bags full of money because it's going somewhere else. Why well, it's going to the Murdoch dynasty. Yeah, of course, and whoever they were representing. So Richard Alexander Murdoch, who goes by Alec, he was born June 17th, 1958. As of 2022, he was 64 years old. He was 5 foot 8 inches, approximately 150 pounds, blonde reddish hair with brown eyes. He graduated from USC School of Law in 1994. He was even volunteering at the office of the 14th Circuit Solicitors. And again, he was not elected for the position. So even not being elected solicitor, Alec Murdoch is still very powerful, is still earning a lot of money. The business is doing well. Yeah, the law firm. The law firm. He's running it with his brother. And he purchases 1,700 acres of land in South Carolina, the Hampton. And he builds this compound. And for years and years, their friends and family say that they, Maggie and Alec had these great parties, people coming in and out. Alec loved to hunt, so he had often hunting parties going on there. 1,700 acres. Property records estimate that the, the land and the compound is worth almost $10 million. That's a lot of money. But nothing really screams at this point that something illegal is going on. Right, just right to... now, we are just, yeah, it doesn't sound right that you have this big family and they were a solicitor, you know, they found a sweet spot and they used it and abused it for as long as they did. But no one is investigating them. Their name, the Murdoch family, is still really big in South Carolina, very prominent. Maggie, the wife, is on charity boards. She goes to these social parties. So everybody knows them. But then in 2018, something happens that changes that. Have a long uh, 4147 Moselle Road. All right, so let's go into more detail about Gloria Satterfield. She was the Murdoch's housekeeper for over two decades. That's over 20 years. I'm sure they've known her, her family, seen her kids, her two sons. In 2018, she dies from a alleged trip and fall accident. It was on the steps outside of Alex Murdoch's residence. And let's listen to a clip from the 911 phone call right here. 911, what is your emergency? Uh, 4147 Moselle Road. Hey, can you give me the address one more time? Make sure I got it right. Yes, 4147 Moselle Road. Okay, what's going on up there? I'm sorry? What's going on out there? Uh, my housekeeper has fallen and her head is bleeding. I cannot get her up. Okay, you said she's fallen. She's bleeding from the head? Yes. Okay. How old is she? I'm not sure, like 58 maybe. Do you know if she fell from standing or not? No. No. Where'd she fall from? Uh, from the, uh, she fell going up the steps, up the brick steps. Man, she's not, no, she's not responding. Okay, I just, I, I've already got them on the way. Me asking questions does not slow them down, ma'am. Ma'am, she can't talk. Okay, do you know... She's cracked her head and there's blood on the concrete and she's breathed out of her left. Ma'am, can you stop asking her these questions? I already have them on anymore? the way. I already have them on the way. Me asking questions does not slow them down in any way. So Maggie, the wife, makes the phone call. She sounds very calm. Almost as if she's being told what happened. But What happened? In, yeah, she wasn't there. Was... She wasn't there. She was cold. But like it almost like, oh, I'm seeing her, but I'm not really there by Gloria. I'm just kind of, like you said, somebody's telling me what to say, and I say. 
And then at some point, Maggie gets very frustrated with the dispatcher. And the dispatcher is obviously trying to help. She is not there. She's just trying to convey information to EMS, like the way she's saying. Um, I just, it, Maggie doesn't sound very concerned. No, she says she's upstairs in the beginning. She's giving out the address, but it, you can hear a male voice in the back just saying stuff. Yeah. So as we said, it, it almost like a whisper. Yeah, it feels as though someone's telling her what to say. Mm -hmm. At one her. point, she just gets off the phone. Another party answers the phone. Mm -hmm. So either way, they're saying that she's bleeding from the ears, has a huge gash on her head. Gash on her head. She's mumbling. She is mumbling at this time, but she's not really coherent. She's not really conscious. She's just kind of there making noises. And a fall of that magnitude would indicate that it's a significant fall, not just something you would fall off the steps a couple feet. It would be something that you you really fell and you kept falling or something hit you. It's important to note here that Alec Murdoch had, is at the property. Yes, he is there. He's he present. shows up. Yeah, he shows up. He claims that he shows up. We don't really know where he, had, he was. Was he at the home when Gloria was in the home? He says that he wasn't that he showed up when he had when she had already fallen but what what's important that we need to note here is that he keeps telling people that she tripped on their dogs right very specific he's very specific he makes those claims to EMS the police and whatnot but that directly contradicts Gloria who gains consciousness for a little bit at the hospital and she says she has no idea how she tripped and fell she doesn't remember she didn't see anything she just fell she just blacked out yeah so she doesn't know if she fell she just she blacked out blacked out she's she's in coma and she dies after a few weeks i just said don't worry i'll be back tomorrow and i love you you told me I love you too that's the last word I heard her say. She never gets better. Right, so she doesn't know what happened to her. Could it indicate that she had a concussion after it happened? Sure, it could have happened. Mm -hmm. However, points are, uh, signs are pointing to something else happening, something, mm -hmm. you know, strained, something intentional. Mm -hmm. But get this, there was never an autopsy done on her after she passed away. Yeah, no, they were just, they took his word that it was an accident. Right. And you, That's how powerful Alec Murdoch and his family is in that county. The coroner is just, oh, she tripped and fell. And they allowed Murdoch or the Murdoch family to really control what happens next. The sons are young. They would come there. They're probably being notified third party. They trust him. They have no reason not to trust Alec point, Murdoch. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, the death certificate says natural causes. How can you die of natural causes if you fall and hit your head? It, it doesn't make any sense. If you died of a heart attack, sure. But they didn't do an autopsy. How are they going to know how she died? It doesn't make sense. He was able to persuade those in charge to control the, the investigation in his favor. Well, there was no investigation if it's natural causes now, is there? So after her death, Alec speaks to the sons. He speaks to the two boys, yes, and makes some very disturbing comments that had stayed with the boys. Right, and, and what were those comments? They said, he said, Alec Murdoch said that Gloria's death was on him, that he was responsible for her death. Do you think there was more of greed because he knew what he wanted to do with the insurance? Or do you believe that it was a guilty conscience or maybe a combination? I think he had a slip up there. I think it was guilty conscience eating at him. And he said what he said. And then after that, Gloria is dead. And now he sees opportunity to swindle another family out of a lot of money. Right. So much so that he is telling them that, hey, sue me, file a wrongful death lawsuit against me. 
Yes. And it turns out we had a liability insurance, which mm -hmm. he wanted to use. Mm -hmm. uh, in this situation, typically he wouldn't get any money. All of the money would go to the two sons. Mm -hmm. However, there was a $4 million lawsuit in which he admitted liability. So the insurance had to pay. And he told the boys it was only 500000 Yeah, he settled with the boys for 500000 Didn't pay them any money from that 500000 And he kept the entire for over $4 million for himself. Wow. Absolutely crazy. He even recommended a lawyer to the boys. And it was his college best friend and roommate who handled the lawsuit against Alec Murdoch. Right, and there's a lot of shady stuff that happened with that, too, because the sons didn't even show up to the meetings between the two mm -hmm. or with the insurance company and their mm -hmm. lawyers. They never signed anything. Mm -hmm. They, I'm sure they agreed. They're, they're young kids. They're being told, hey, this is, you know, what you're going to get for money. And they're like, oh, wow, that sounds like a lot, $500,000. Sure, let's take it. And, you know, after working – after having a relationship with someone coming to your home for two decades he knew gloria alec murdoch knew gloria so well he knew her boys he knew that she loved her kids and she was a caring mom and she would have wanted them to be taken care of after her that he would not give them any money right he left them high and dry yeah and he he knew them I think he did have a little remorse because he, he watched them grow up. He said that one statement of, it's my fault. I think that statement will be the unraveling for him. It stayed with the detectives because the boys did report it. Yeah, th that exact statement. And that's mm -hmm. something they're going to remember. And obviously, the detectives will remember. Her body is now exhumed. And they are performing the autopsy. So we will know if there was damages to her bone structure. Well, hopefully it was back in 2000. Yes, the bone structure, absolutely, yes. Yes, if she was hit in the head or um, strangled, they will be able to hopefully find out. I mean, so Gloria is still a big question mark if Alec Murdoch had something to do with her death. After Gloria's unspeakable death, Bodies keep piling up around the Murdoch dynasty. In 2019, a deadly boat crash kills a young girl, and the Murdoch family is in the center of a new criminal probe. Could the Murdoch dynasty survive another scandal? Hmm. Join us next week on the Crime Room Podcast as we discuss 19-year-old Mallory's Beach's death. Till the next time. <laughs>